Next, we're excited to welcome Congressman Tim Wahlberg of Michigan, who will be joining Bob for a special discussion on U.S. energy security and how it relates to today's topic on energy efficiency. Welcome, Congressman. Hey, Congressman. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Uh, yeah, good morning to you. So let's start with some news of the day. Um, is uh, any hope for a supplemental bill, or is that basically going to be punted until January? And you guys are expected in the House to, to leave this week. Is that right? Uh, we'll be leaving today. You'll be, yeah. Okay. So yeah. what do you think of where do we go when you come back? We go back into a debate format, starting out debate within the Republican conference itself. <laughs> right. Uh, that's all, that's a, a challenge. And uh, uh, I will prognosticate that ultimately we will get a supplemental. Okay. Uh, when we do that, um, remains to be seen. Do, do you think it'll be wrapped up in the government funding bill, or do you think it'll be two separate kind of deals, or uh, remains yeah. to be seen? I don't have wings on, do I? <laughs> Get out your crystal ball. I just came from the bipartisan prayer breakfast, uh, and, uh, but I don't have any. I, you know, I, uh, ultimately, it's going to come down to um, what the president wants to achieve in the sense of reality. Mm -hmm. uh, the House is not going to move um, a direction, for instance, without, without securing the border, without language in there. Uh, any other funding, whether it be for Ukraine, whether it be for uh, defense, whether it be for uh, energy issues, remains to be seen. So uh, in, when you have a two-vote majority in the majority, mm -hmm. and when I was in, at COP last weekend, and um, we were talking about doing snowboarding down sand dunes out in the desert, I reminded my Republican colleagues that uh, if we lost any member or two, we'd be in, the, be in the minority. Speaker Jeffries, yes. And uh, so John, Cur John Curtis is a good snowboarder. He made it alive, but we kept everybody else from doing it. I, I can't, it's, it's tough to tell you. Yeah. Uh, because it's, it's been such a crazy time. We had a reception for Kevin McCarthy last night. Why? Why should we be in that situation? But mm -hmm. uh, without uh, getting too negative at Christmas time, uh, it's going to be a challenge, but ultimately sure. it has to get done. We'll find a way to get it done. Okay, so you, you've written and you've ad advocated for energy security and reliability, but what does that mean? Can you explain? Uh, to me, it means living in Michigan, uh, doing what Michigan has done for years, and uh, that's an all above energy plan. Uh, if you look at Michigan, we're surrounded by water, uh, no salt, no biting fish, uh, beautiful opportunities. In my district alone, uh, on Lake Michigan, which is the western edge of my district, we have Cook Nuclear Plant. On the eastern edge, which is Lake Erie, I have uh, the Fermi Plant. Uh, we have uh, the second largest coal-fired plant in North America, sitting there in Monroe County on Lake Erie. We have gas-powered plants. We have solar fields being developed all over, acres and acres of farm ground being turned into solar uh, fields. In Hillsdale County, if you know anything about Hillsdale College, the conservatism there, the county is the same. Windmills are all over Hillsdale County. Uh, that's just a microcosm of what Michigan is. And I like to think that that is an example to the rest of the world, let alone the country, of what we ought to be doing, where it works, how it works, what, it, what works best, and continuing, as we talked about in Dubai, and meeting with the president of, of uh, COP28, uh, it, was, it was amazing for me to hear a guy that is fully invested in fossil fuels uh, talking about an all-of-the-above plan that lifts countries around the world up toward meeting emission standards. And when he said, uh, bottom line, all of us, the key issue is emissions and reducing emissions to get toward that 1.5 degree, to get to get where we need to go, but we know that there are countries that can't do it, like the UAE or the United States. We don't have the, the resources aren't there. So what about thinking about moving them where they can, and then from there developing further? I like that. Um, and in our case, you know, I'm a strong pusher for nuclear power. Um, I think that we're capable of doing it. If you just look at what took place last winter, 
uh, following the Ukraine uh, war taking uh, off, I was at, um, uh, in, in Brussels a year and a half ago, uh, just before, in fact, the week the Ukraine war broke out. We were there uh, meeting with the parliamentarians, and they were talking about uh, all that they were doing in renewable energy, and then when we'd asked the question, knowing the answer, asked the question, but what about dispatchable energy? What about base load? They said, oh, we got that taken care of. Well, they had it taken care of because they were getting the resources from Russia. Well, that all changed by the end of that week. And Germany was building, burning wood last year. And France was going on just fine with nuclear energy. And so I think we need to take all of that into consideration. Michigan is uh, right now going the opposite direction, sadly. Uh, we're we're uh, being pushed by our administration, our governor and administration in, in, in Michigan uh, to go away from uh, fossil fuels, uh, not pushing for nuclear, though our governor has given assent to the Palisades plant being redeveloped and redeployed with advanced nuclear uh, energy. Uh, but um, uh, last week she made a decree that uh, all of the state vehicles will be EV uh, by 2024. That's an aggressive push uh, towards something that we're not quite pre pre prepared for yet. And you, like other Republicans, voted against the IRA. Yeah. Uh, what's been the effect in, in Michigan? There have been reports of a lot of clean energy jobs. It, it, was it, uh, obviously, there are a lot of reasons why Republicans cite because it was such a massive bill, health care, energy. Um, but is it, is it those mandates that you say? It's the mandates. Yeah. That's a key. I don't think any of us, the, the, the fact that you know, I've been to COP two years now um, as part of the uh, Energy and Commerce Committee this year, a bipartisan CODEL that went there, but uh, also it included the Conservative Climate Caucus, of which I'm a member. And in fact, right now, it's, it's the second largest caucus in the, in the Republican conference. Uh, we believe in being good stewards of resources. We believe that innovation will bring us to a place that we all want to be, I think. I think. We all want to see the emissions reduced. We all want to um, leave uh, our country uh, for our grandkids, uh, that's, that's said as a grandparent, you know, I forget about my, my kids except I'm glad I didn't kill them because they gave me grandkids. Um, <laughs> but I want to leave it better. I truly do. Uh, but I don't want the mandates because as I look back through history, the United States has progressed beyond any other place in the world because we've fostered innovation. Uh, the entrepreneurial spirit uh, saying if you build it, they will come. And if you build it right, I mean, Samsung, here we are today. Uh, I have three televisions in my, my holdings that all have Samsung on it because I think for myself uh, that it's smart enough as TV, TVs go for a guy like me to understand how to do it. And the quality is great. And now if Samsung doesn't keep up to it, I'm going to move to another one. Uh, but that doesn't come with a mandate, and I think that competition builds. And so in COP, what we saw, comparison to three years ago when the Conservative Climate Caucus first started showing up, and people were aghast. I remember last year we met with John Kerry. He kind of looked at us as saying, what are you, non-striped zebras or what? I mean, <laughs> um, a Conservative Climate Caucus? I never heard of anything like that. But it developed a relationship with, with uh, Secretary Kerry that has continued on and we're talking about it and he's come on board more strongly than ever before for nuclear energy. And I think that's where it comes, not by mandates, but by heads getting together and saying how do we innovate to a point that we meet the concerns of emissions, we continue to reduce, but we give people the choice. Uh, that's why my CARS Act. Um, and Senator Kerry and I don't agree on the CARS Act, and we talked about that at COP. And uh, uh, the, the, the climate czar at the White House gave me a total dissertation on why I was wrong. And I'm looking forward to having another, another opportunity to speak with Ali. But uh, uh, that's, I think, where it will happen as we innovate, as we offer opportunities, as we offer a competition, and as we say in the end, we're all going to the same place, all going to the same place, emissions reduction, sustainability, uh, progress for everyone, 
lifting up as opposed to holding back in any way, shape, or form. So you have uh, an open dialogue now with John Kerry. Obviously, you don't agree on everything, but... But, but we agree on some things. Yeah, okay. And, and that's the beauty of it. And uh, when, when he uh, heard my uh, uh, story about uh, John Dingle and Sergio Marchionne of uh, Daimler Chrysler, the late Sergio Marchionne, talking about cafe standards that were coming out at that time, uh, first and foremost, John Kerry didn't think I looked old enough to be back with those guys. No, no, <laughs> no that, that wasn't the case. But, but I said, you know, what I learned from them sitting as a, a newly minted freshman member of Congress, listening to the great John Dingle uh, give his dissertation about why we're doing those cafe standards. This is back in 2007. And um, Sergio Marchione sitting there in his black outfit. Uh, you could see almost a cigar sticking out, but it wasn't. And after uh, John Dingle had uh, given the plan, I'll never forget Marchione saying in his Italian accent, um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we think we can reach that. But all we ask is that once you give us this standard, please get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Don't tell us how to achieve it between our engineers, our designers, and our customers. And I, I caught that. And our customers, we will figure out how to do it. What engine will meet your goals and your standards? And that really hit home with me uh, because I think that's what Samsung does. I think that's what uh, all of the great minds in industry, if we give them the chance, give them a reasonable goal to attain, and then get out of the way. We'll see what happens. Uh, you have uh, legislation, uh, bipartisan bill with uh, Congresswoman Rochester. What, what, what legislation are you working in this space that you think maybe could get done in this Congress? In, in what specific space? Uh, it just energy, climate space. Well, uh, I'm going to see the Pipes Act uh, mm -hmm. right. fully enacted. Um, um, it's far safer than transporting flammables, et cetera, uh, through our communities. Uh, as illustration, you know, when, when we shut down Keystone, um, that, uh, that gave more opportunity for China to receive those, those heavy crude resources that we would have refined in our country and allowed us to have further energy dependence and to export LNG and other things to uh, around the world. Uh, but that stopped. Um, uh, the lawsuit going on with Line 5 in Michigan that brings propane, natural gas, as well as, as, well as p petroleum um, from Canada across the Great Lakes, um, providing for the Upper Peninsula of Michigan the majority of their fuel source, both for agriculture as well as for heating their homes, and then back to Canada as well. And uh, the Line 5 plan would make it much safer than the, the Line 5 that's been across the Straits of Mackinac uh, since 1976, I think it's been. Uh, this would take it below the, the, the base of the, of the lake, have a tunnel. We can put communication systems through there as well as energy systems. And so that's something we want to get across the line. Um, uh, the, 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 the challenge is, um, is getting to that understanding, and I think that's, again, why that bipartisan uh, Codell that went across uh, to, to COP this year is so important as we see places we, where we can work. I want to see permitting reform uh, happen. I was just talking uh, while waiting here about our discussion on a panel on permitting in Dubai, which is a bipartisan concern. Frank Pallone, Kathy Morris Rogers uh, have much agreement on the need for permitting reform, the unnecessary cost. I brought up at, at Dubai in our panel that uh, with the advent of AI, any of you, any of you heard about that? <laughs> I'm picking up that there's something out there. Um, but when we, when we add costs to a project because of permitting, where AI could find out, plumb the depths of what's going on in other projects, and all of a sudden we have 
let's use Samsung again, coming to get a permit to do something amazing, why go through the same hoops over and over again that we could, we could say through AI, this is what another project had, this is what they offered as solution, it was acceptable, and it's the same as what Samsung is offering, let's give the permit much more quickly. Uh, so I think there are things we can look at mm -hmm. in the whole permitting process because when you stop and think right now, just to get through NEPA, it's on average 4.7 years, five years. Then you, then you add the transmission or transportation permits, then you add another six to seven years. So now you've got, you've got a potential beyond 10 years and investors look at that and say, I'm not gonna have any idea of return for 10 years why do I want to invest in this? We can't have that happening. We have to speed things up mm -hmm. um, because uh, the rest of the world doesn't worry about the permits. China's not worrying about the permits at all. India's not worrying about the permits that we are. Russia certainly isn't worrying about it. Um, we need to stay ahead. And uh, so let's reduce those, those unnecessary costs, not, not take away the protections, not make, not, not, we don't want to do away with all the hoops. We want, we want it to work right. But mm -hmm. in the case of AI, maybe that's, that's a tool we can use, and we discussed that, in fact, in our AI hearing in Energy and Commerce yesterday uh, had with the AI, AI brains in front of us. Uh, and uh, they concurred that it could be very useful as long as we still, as decision makers, remain as co-pilots alongside of AI, not just accepting AI, because there could be some mischief, mischief. Uh, but if we're co-pilots, like sitting on a plane, uh, with decisions coming from technology, uh, there's still that human saying, let me, let me check that out. I think we could have some real benefit. Well, Congressman, thanks for, for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Please, thanks.